anyway, my daddy uh, drank, smoked weed, looked at pornography. I really looked up to my daddy. I didn't know anybody else to look up to. But So the first time I tried weed and alcohol and saw porn was from him. So I was kind of raised up in the wrong way to go where a lot of people was raised up, like in the church, and especially down south, but I wasn't. Got fascinated with motorcycles, anything fast, anything a little bit dangerous, anything a little bit out of the norm. I kind of gravitated towards that because I didn't have anything else to kind of look forward to. It gave me a, anything that gave me a little bit of a thrill, made me feel different. I, mm. I wanted it, I wanted a piece of it. Uh, my idea of God was something unattainable, something that I would not be able to ever have anything to do with because of the way I looked, how many tattoos I had, all the drugs I did, all the sin I was involved in. My my um, my thoughts were I had to get all these things corrected and changed in my life before I could ever approach God and that was too hard to do and it seemed impossible. But that's the opposite of what the gospel teaches and what the Bible teaches. Um, we're to come to Christ as we are. If we could get perfect, he would have never needed to come hmm. and die. He, he lived the perfect life. Uh, he lived what we couldn't do. And the gospel is simply exchanging my sinfulness for his, his righteousness. So in the eyes of God, he sees the righteousness of Jesus, not the wretched man I used to be. The scriptures teach that no man comes to God unless he draws them. Sometimes he draws them to, through basketball, uh, through men like Pastor T. For me, my, my thing was motorcycles and living fast. That's what I like. But the drugs, would I would hit a bottom. So I'd lose everything from time to time. Then I'd you know, kind of get it together. I'd get tired of being homeless, get tired of <clears throat> being hungry. So I'd quit all those things long enough to get my belly full and a house to live in again and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, I was at a bottom one time and had nothing. Uh, I still had a job, but that was that was about it. The only way I got around was a company truck. I was an air conditioning technician. So it wasn't that hard to find a job. But uh, anyway, I got a phone call from a radio station DJ one day. He said it was Jeff Kidd from Y96. He said, you're a proud new owner of a Vulcan Classic 1500 motorcycle worth $10,000. I'm like, click. I hung up on I thought it was one of my buddies. My, one of my biker buddies played a joke on me. But what had happened is I had entered my name and wanted a drawing like you just see at a regular. This was at a this was at a, a place you pay your light bill, like a little box on the counter with a little stack of drawings. You fill it up, stick it in there. And I, he's like, he called me right back, and he asked me was my name Richie Howard. I said, yeah. He said, well, we drew your name in a drawing. Did you enter a drawing? And I had a flashback like where I used to pay my light bill or that little thing, and I still thought it was probably a scam. Uh, <laughs> But he told me where I could come on what day to come get this, to pick this thing up. And I had zero to my name. I had no money, nothing extra, because I blew it all on drugs and stuff. But I had a motorcycle license because I drove motorcycles all my life. I borrowed a helmet from one of my buddies just in case I did win it. Well, come to find out, I did win this bike. Paid in full, didn't have to pay taxes on it or nothing. Well, it was part of God's plan because a few days later I found a flyer on the wall at uh, this job site I was at, had a motorcycle on it. And I, it caught my eye, because I just won a motorcycle. And I was thinking it was like a poker run, like where you ride around and do like a charity ride. Uh, so I took it off, I didn't really even read it, I just stuck it in my pocket. Well that night I went home, got drunk, got wasted, going to my bed, about midnight and I was pulling stuff out of my pockets and I found that flyer and opened it up. And it had the picture of the motorcycle, but up under it, it said Biker Sunday. And it had the name of a church and a pastor's phone number. What in the crap is this? Why would you drive a motor? Why would people be doing a motorcycle event at a church? So I said, I'm just gonna call this preacher. And uh, so I called the pastor. He answered the phone, believe it or not, at midnight. And I told him I had won a motorcycle and found a flyer to his church. And he said, well, that sounds like a divine intervention, divine appointment to me. I didn't know what he's talking about. I said, well, I'm not going to your church. I said, I don't care nothing about preachers. I said, I'm covered in tattoos. I do drugs and I drink liquor every day. <laughs> he, said, he said, well, I'd love to meet you. And I said, did you just hear what I just said? <laughs> and he said, I'd love to meet you. 
<laughs> and so something happened right there. This man, I was feeling the love of Christ through this man. I just described how wretched I was, but yet this man said he'd love to meet me. Mm. Now that ministered to my heart. I, I went to bed crying that night. Now it might have been an old drunk cry. But, I, <laughs> but, but something happened, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. And I couldn't wait till Sunday to get up and go meet this man. And I told him, I said, well, if I wake up Sunday morning and don't take a drink, I'll go to your church. So Sunday morning, sure enough, I got up and went to this church. <clears throat> it was a little small country church. It was about half this side full of bikers and half this side full of just regular old Joe church members. They wasn't in suits and ties. They wasn't in, you know, uh, and then these guys over here were all dressed in leather and had do-rags on their head. And then they all stood up and they was all worshiping together. And the bikers had their hands raised and they had tattoos all over their arms and on the back of their head. And, this don't seem like my view of church at all. Mm. And I was like, these people are okay with these people in this ch in church together. And it just kind of blew my mind for a minute. And then uh, then the uh, pastor said, we're going to have the, I forgot his name, so-and-so come up and give his testimony. Well, the only testimony I ever heard was in court. I was like, well, how's he going to give a testimony in church? You know? <laughs> And so I didn't know what a testimony was other than in the court. And uh, so he starts talking about this guy stands up, starts talking about his life and how he had overdosed on cocaine. And he was in the hospital, and a minister came through the hospital and shared the gospel with him. And you know, I'd heard the story of Jesus died on the cross, you know, buried and raised again. Right. You just believe that you go to heaven, all's good. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't no power in that. But there was power in what this man said because what he said after this. First of all, he he responded to the gospel from a place of just overdosed on cocaine. Not he mm. got a good suit. Right. He went and got married. He made sure that everything was in order, and then came to church. He came to Christ on a, a, at a place of pure brokenness, and then he described the rest of his life. And he started mentioning things like he was a new creation in Christ. He was born again. And I was like, now that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Not just repeat after me and you'll go to heaven, because that never never had no power in my life. I've done that a dozen times, hmm. you know, just randomly, you know, but there was no power in it. But this man described something that happened to him now, not gonna happen to him when he died. Mm -hmm. He described something that happened to him now. And so I, at that moment, I realized that somehow the God of the universe that created all of this, that come and died for our sins, had orchestrated every little step on that day for me to get to that place, to hear that guy give his testimony along with the gospel message, and then it made sense. Otherwise, I would have never went to church. Mm. I would have never listened to anybody that says I'm a preacher. But I listened to that man, because he looked like me, he sounded like me, he, he had been through what I'd been through, and God had changed his life, and I desperately needed a change in my life. That was evident. Mm. And so that day, I just said, "Okay, Lord, I'm yours. Whatever you have for me, I'm, I'm yours. I, I think you led me here today to hear this, and I can't help but to respond." Mm. How long ago was this? That was in 2004. Yeah. So after that, immediately something changed in me. My relationship with sin changed. Before that day, I loved every bit of it. I loved to fight. I loved to hook up with women. I loved to do dope. I loved to drink liquor. Uh, I had hate in my heart. All that changed that day. I ain't saying I did it perfectly, but I, my relationship with those things changed. Mm. Now, when I did them, I hated it. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I can explain to you why that happened is something happened on the inside. Because I ain't had time to go to church and learn a bunch of stuff about the Bible yet. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I, I struggled with that because this was a little old country church and they only met on Sunday morning. They weren't but a dozen members and most of them was over 60 years old. But the, the pastor happened to like motorcycles. So I started like riding with that motorcycle group and stuff. And uh, But circumstances uh, would come up and I, and I didn't follow God perfectly. Yeah. Uh, so I would say that the foundation that I built whenever I first became a Christian was shaky. Mm -hmm. It was like it wasn't solid, like yeah. a solid foundation. Right. Because, 
and the main reason is, uh, I guess it'd be my fault, but I didn't know that I needed to be discipled. I didn't know that people... Somebody mentor. Needed to be mentored. I, yeah. I needed somebody to come alongside me and say, this is how to walk with God. Yep. Instead, you got the world screaming at you this, and you got the little bit of church you're getting on Sunday here. It's different than this church. You can come here seven nights a week here and learn about God and how to walk with God. But there I could. Uh, so my, my foundation, was, it was kind of shaky. It was a little rocky. And when things get would get tough, sometimes I would turn back to what I, I knew mm -hmm. would give me that temporary fix. Yeah. fix. But it was always false. It was always so false, and I hated it this time. Yeah. But uh, in 2017, five years ago, yep. uh, I came to a place of something's got to, something's got to give. Yeah. Either I'm finna take myself out of here yep. because I'm just in a, I was in turmoil. I had the Holy Spirit of God living inside of me because that's what happens when we get saved. But I got all the ways of the world tugging me and I'm trying to juggle. Everything. I'm trying to juggle. And what God wanted me was all in. <clears throat> what he wanted. Because he had a purpose and a plan for my life just like he does everybody. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. But if you don't, if you don't obey God, you'll never know what that is. Mm. Because you got all these distractions so I needed to get to a place where I could just shut off the ways of the world I like to use Romans 12 too I know Paul wasn't talking about rehab because they wasn't known in Rome but I needed to give my tail to rehab to a Christian discipleship program to just lay a foundation and that's what I did I went and got I went for six months in this place with about 12 other men every day studied the word of God every day practiced living the word of God and when I graduated, I had a foundation that wouldn't crumble when a storm would come. Mm. So the storms still come. All the temptations were the same. But this time I had a foundation where I could, I could, uh, I had a leg to stand on. Yeah. It wasn't shaky. It wasn't built on sand. It was built on concrete. And so uh, yeah. I just learned how to deal with the temptations of the world through repentance and following Christ. Well, before I didn't have that. Well, the only thing I'd ever done my whole life was air conditioning work mm. and construction work. <laughs> and then my, my history was rough at best, uh, but I felt the call to ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm like, people like me need to know and look like me. Uh, and I, I know I look just like a Baptist preacher, but I like to pull my legs out. I'm covered in, in tattoos, my back, my arms, my legs. Uh, they people that look like me need to know that God can use them too. Mm -hmm. And so I felt the call to ministry, but I was like, how in the world do I get into? How do I mm -hmm. provide for a family? What am I going to do? Just go say, hey, can you hire me to be a preacher? Well, I knew I wasn't going to be like a preacher preacher. <laughs> I just I just knew God had called yeah. me. Yeah. So one day I'm at work and uh, I'm about two uh, about two years into my solid foundation walk mm -hmm. and my boss is putting me through this training to move me up in the company <clears throat> and part of it was uh, write out what you're going to do in five years to get to this level in the company and all that I'm like I don't plan to be in this company or in no kind of level I plan to be on the streets or somewhere doing ministry mm -hmm. and so I was convicted of that I said my boss is paying all this money for me to go through this and I don't plan on being it I said I need to be honest with you I went home, told my wife, she said, don't you dare, he'll fire, he might fire you. I said, I can't help it, I'm gonna tell him. So I went and put it in a notice. I said, I don't know if it's five weeks or five years, but God's calling me to ministry. I don't know how I'm gonna make it, but I just know like I know. You call me. Uh, and then about five weeks, or no, about nine weeks to the day, he didn't fire me, he said, well, you just give me as much notice as you can. The church I was going to, which is this church, I uh, said, Check it out now. Uh, we're looking for a guy to, help do maintenance in the church. I said, don't you do uh, plumbing or electrical or something? I said, no, well, I do air conditioning. But uh, air conditioners produce water, so you need a plumbing to go out from it, and they run off electricity. So technically, I know three a little bit. So long story short, the church hired me on as to do maintenance here at the church. Yeah, yeah. And I felt like that was the answer to my prayer. Well, this is how you provide for your family and do ministry, because I can... I can both. fit. Yeah. Sir? So you can do both. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm on campus to do ministry. I can change a light bulb for the glory of God because it's in his church. Yeah. You know, I can unclog a toilet for his glory because his gospel is being preached here. Yeah. 
And so I did that faithfully for two years. And while I was here, I ministered to the people that walked up to the church every yeah. chance I'd get. Um, yeah. uh, the people who was down and out, whose yeah. faces were covered in tattoos. And that was always like a magnet to them. And yeah. I was on campus to do that. So yeah. it got to where the, the, the front desk was calling maintenance instead of one of the pastors. So <laughs> yeah. the pastors recognized that. I said, okay, Richie's called the ministry. We're going to license him to, to the ministry. And then long story short, they said, you don't belong in maintenance. You belong as one of the ministers on staff. And so they, they put me in, in missions here. So, so that's how God. How, how long ago was that? November will be a year. Yeah, you just been. Now you're past on the staff. Now they got a new maintenance man also. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but see, I couldn't come knocking on the door and said, hey, I'd like to do ministry here full time. And they said, okay, what's your, what's your uh, credentials? I'm like, I don't have none. I just love people and I want to minister to people. But God used it, you know, me being on the campus, the, my availability to, uh, to answer the call that he gave me, but also for the other people to see that it was legit it was a real call to ministry and, yeah and so uh yeah that's, that's it's just cool. been five years ago man yeah that was just five years ago. five years ago whole different man rock bottom now you, now you you've been on mission trips and yeah. i mean people you, you you said like you probably shared the gospel with and led to christ you think i don't know i'm sure there's hundreds or more yeah but i've been all over the world i've been to israel to the church. Yeah. To Cuba, to a communist yeah. country. Spent a week on the Indian reservation in Kentucky not too long ago. Yep. Headed to, uh, that was in Montana. Headed to Kentucky next week. Was down in Florida last week. So uh, now I, I know God's purpose and plan for my life, and it's because, you know, I just made that decision to follow Him with my whole heart. Just homeless five years ago. And because you paid your life bill that day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right.